Hello, I got one of these Runcam Micro Eagle FPV cameras to take a look at. So I stuck it on my mini quad and flew it around for a bit and I'll show you some of the footage that I got from that just from the DVR uh, in a minute. But to summarize what this is, it's basically a Runcam Eagle 2 Pro <laughs> in a smaller package. So just to recap on some of the lineage of these cameras because there's a whole lot of them out there now and it's starting to get a bit confusing but the Eagle, the original Eagle was something in more of this kind of a form factor and the draw card for that one was that it had very good wide dynamic range. So the Eagle 2 Pro has added to that wide dy dynamic range, has improved it a little bit and it also adds the ability to switch between 16x9 and 4x3 screen aspect ratios and you can also um, switch between NTSC and PAL outputs and it has a microphone this is the Eagle 2 Pro that I'm talking about so basically what you have here is everything that the Eagle 2 Pro has minus the microphone and plus a little bit of extra low light capability and all of that in something that's not too much bigger than this here which is the Micro Swift uh, so it's a little bit tricky for me to show it to you here but basically the dimensions of it are Width-wise, you get the same tiny 19 millimeter profile here. Height-wise, I think is 19 millimeters as well. Uh, Length-wise, is about 24. So, <laughs> a bit tricky to see that, but you can see that is quite a bit longer than it is wide. Um, and we'll just have a look at the web page because so there it is, 45 dollars. Um, the exact dimensions are here. We go. So 19 by 19 by 22 they're saying but well you got a little bit there to consider as well um, and there we go so there's the features from the Eagle 2 I'm not sure somewhere along the way there was an Eagle 2 which had one of these new features added but I'm starting to lose track uh, you can flip horizontally and vertically um, and another thing that's new in this micro Eagle is the ability to set the level of wide dynamic range and it comes set at level 5. All of my flying in the videos that I'll show you is done at completely stock settings. I haven't changed anything and it comes at level 5 which seems to be a pretty good setting. Um, and it also has none of the problems that I found with the Eagle 2 Pro in that when you look at the sun and then you look away from the sun and if you do that very quickly you get sort of a blast of white. Everything whites out for a good two seconds or so and that could easily cause a crash if you're flying in close proximity to something but what I've noticed with the Micro Eagle is they've changed those defaults um, I think with the Eagle 2 Pro you could actually change those I was a bit too lazy to investigate but um, with this one whatever the defaults that they've chosen for this are they're a lot better so I did manage to see that completely white screen effect at one point but it only lasts for about one or two frames and then it goes away. It's much, much better. Um, and what else was I going to look at on here? So uh, you don't get too much in the kit with this. So I guess it's pretty much what you used to get. Maybe a few less screws than normal. Um, and I was just comparing the list of these <laughs> parameters. They like to call these parameters. I guess it's parameters. Features or something as specs is the word we would probably more typically use. Um, but if you go down the list of the Micro Eagle and the Eagle 2 Pro, the only differences you're going to find is that on the Eagle 2 Pro there's a microphone, and on the Eagle 2 Pro the low light performance is 0 0.01 lux, so this is 0 0.001 lux, so it should do a lot better in low light, and I flew it at sunset just after the sun had gone down in pretty bad lighting conditions and it performed really, really well. I was quite impressed. Um, as with the Eagle, the only down point that I can see for this camera is that there is a noticeable little bit of latency when you're flying compared to cameras, earlier cameras like the Swift. Uh, so I think for my mini quads where I'm going to be flying between trees and little gaps and everything I'm still going to stick with the Swift because I, I mostly fly it at daytime and I'm not too fussy about having a really nice wide dynamic range picture to look at um, and this will probably go on a plane I think that's not going to be going through too many small gaps um, and I did <laughs> when I switched from the Swift to this I have to admit I almost thought that I'd put a 3S battery on instead of a 4S battery just because the response was noticeably low um, it's better than the original Eagle though, I'll give it that. I 
did crash a few times with the original Eagle just because the latency was a bit different to the Swift. Um, but this, they've improved things quite a bit, and I haven't crashed, although I did skim very, very close to the ground on more than one occasion. Um, but the latency obviously is, is much better, so it's not to the point where I'm crashing, which is nice. Um, so I think I will leave this on this mini quad for a good while at least, but eventually it'll go onto a plane. Uh, so here's the bits that you get in the box, a uh, little extension cable, some little screws, and this thing which is essentially, I think it's functionally equivalent to the little black plastic uh, TikTok sort of a button thingy that with the joystick that you used to get. Um, I kind of like the uh, plastic joystick button thingy a bit better than this, but it works fine. Um, and of course that mount that they that I have here is also included as well uh, and you'll see some hot glue down there and around the front and that's one reason why I didn't take this out to show you in my hands I just kind of wanted to leave it in there and the reason that I had hot glue in there was because the mounting holes that I have here were a little bit too wide to use the outside positions for this mount so I've stuck just a single screw in the center and that was not enough to stop it from giving jello at certain prop speeds so I'll show you I think we've looked at all we need to look at here on the bench there's not really too much else to it um, so let's just look at some flying footage so here's a bit of video from the first day I tried it, it was very overcast but still quite well lit and you can see here the jello from that mount is pretty annoying it wasn't unflyable but I just thought I'd show you this in case you thought of using that single screw to mount it as well you're probably going to end up with this problem um, there we go again Ooh. Um, but you can like I did just fix that with a little bit of hot glue okay now let's have a look at a bright sunny day this is with the Sun almost directly overhead so it's about as bright as you're going to get and this area here is actually quite dark but it doesn't look that way at all in the video so it's um, the wide dynamic range is pulling out the detail in the shadow very well. Um, what else was I going to say about this? So there's no problem. Yeah, see the sun came into the frame there, but we didn't get any um, whiting out. The only time I could get it to do that whiting out thing was on an overcast situation. So there's another flip coming up here where the sun goes in and out of the frame very quickly. No, that's kind of slowly, but right about here, I think. Yeah. So this situation here, no problem whatsoever. Um, but I guess in general a bright sunny scene like this is no problem for pretty much any FPV camera. But I do like the way it um, brings out the information, shall we say, from the shadows. Um, this is just sort of looking at the sun through the trees, sort of brightness is coming and going. But, I mean, brightness of this patch here is coming and going but the sort of brightness balance of the whole scene as a whole is just not changing at all it's very um, natural looking now I think just here I had a problem I was going to come around and go into the go in that little gap there but uh, it just didn't feel right so on this attempt I bailed because just the the lag the latency was not really and also here I uh, no this the situation is different. See, if you have enough time to line up, see I'm going in a straight line for this area there. Um, in that situation, the latency doesn't matter. It's just when you're trying to turn at the same time as get through a small gap. So I think I came back and I tried again a little bit slower, preparing myself for the possible latency issue. But it still didn't feel very good when I, I managed to get through without hitting anything. So it's better than the Eagle was uh, from last year but still you know that latency is noticeable between this and the Swift on this next flight I noticed a strange sort of a color balance issue though it could have been something in the radio transmission because it seemed to happen at the same spot so as I go down the road here the color sort of goes quite bluey and flickers around a little bit and then I've noticed that it seems to do this until you look at the sun or something very bright so it's, see how it's sort of a cold blue tint to everything and then when you and then it goes a little bit sort of 
gray, uh, greener and warmer looking, a bit more yellowy. I don't know, maybe I'm just imagining it. But at some point later on in this flight, I went back down the same road in the same area, and the blue tint came back. But see that? Let me just show you again. Sort of a colder bluish color hue, and then you look at the sun and back now it's green and gold, a uh, bit warmer feeling. Anyway, I'm, I think that's the camera doing that. I don't know. See, back down this road, and you watch we get that blue flickering again. <laughs> I'm just being fussy. Here, just looking at the sun and down again a few times. And you can see the, the brightness in the whole scene doesn't change at all whether the sun is in the scene or not. Whereas it used to be the case that the, the overall brightness of the picture would change greatly when the sun went in and out of the frame. So it's a really natural, pleasant kind of a picture to look at. And you can see that, although I complain about the latency, it's not so bad that I wouldn't go close to the trees like that. You just ha have to be aware that there is that latency and you should be okay. Here's some video from a overcast day, and it looks quite bright actually in this picture, but at the time when you were looking at it in person, uh, it didn't really seem as bright as this. So this again is the wide dynamic range making the whole scene much more pleasant to look at. Um, but I don't think this plover was thinking things were too pleasant. And <laughs> I could have chased this for quite a while if I wanted to, because um, they're not as fast or as agile as the hawk. I chased a hawk once, and the hawk was able to get away from me quite easily. Um, but this guy, poor thing, um, was not very good at it. Anyway, I just gave up after a while, but... Um, somewhere along here, I did manage to um, get that white, white outy kind of thing to happen. Is it here, no, I think it was the next video. Hold on. So <laughs> it get, gets a bit repetitive after a while. Somewhere around here. Okay. So that's the sun, and I was just able to do it once or twice. Here we go. So you'll see see that the whole frame goes white, but it only does it very, very briefly. I'll show you that again. So again, this... Um, that's the sun there, and if you were to look at this in person, it's actually quite bright if you looked right in that direction. But somehow it's bringing the brightness to a nice, constant-looking level across the whole picture, which is really good. And if I pause it at just the right point... There. So there's like maybe one or two frames that go like that. It's not even fully white, like the Eagle 2 Pro was. It's just sort of almost white. Here we go. So that's the kind of thing that um, it's not going to cause a crash, I don't think. You'd be <laughs> you'd have to be pretty unlucky if just those one or two frames were obscuring something that you needed to prevent a crash. Uh, anyway, let's look at some sunset. Uh, have a nice video from sunset and. This is quite a challenging situation for any camera, I think, because we've got bright light and the foreground is actually quite dark, so I'm quite impressed that we can still see the grass slipping by underneath at this point. And it looks quite pretty.
and again the light through there you can still see quite well and I put my um, hat cam on the fence because I wanted to try and use another camera to show you so just there is my hat cam and I'll show you the video that that was taking in a minute as I zoomed past um, but I wanted to use another camera to try and give you some kind of a comparison as to how tricky this particular lighting scene is to get a good video of so anyway it uh, finishes off with a nice little bit of a circle around myself showing the beautiful sunset in fact, the way I circle around like this, it actually made that sunset look even more pretty because if you let the sunset stay in the frame for a few seconds, the colors will adjust. You can already see it starting to adjust and it, it goes a bit dimmer. Whereas if you just let it pass by quickly, um, it stays bright. So just for comparison, this is what the Mobius sees when I do that same kind of test. I think the Mobius will probably get the colors of the sunset a bit better, uh, but I don't know. Ah, what a nice sunset. <laughs> anyway, I hope that was uh, of some use for, for reference. And I think I'll just leave it here. Thank you for watching.